Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while. I've been so busy with uni work, which is why I haven't been making videos, but hey, I'm back. I'm back. In this video, we're going to be breaking down a scene from season five of Peaky Blinders, the meeting between Oswald Mosley, Tommy Shelby, Arthur, and Michael. And I found that scene extremely interesting because Oswald Mosley was able to just walk in the room and completely take control. So I'm going to be doing a breakdown of that scene. But before I begin, I just want to do a quick thank you for everybody watching this video right now and everybody who's subscribed to my channel. If you haven't sub, thanks. But yeah, it's been so crazy. I hit a thousand subscribers. I mean, I only started this channel like early in the year and I stopped making videos when I got super busy in the second semester. And even then, all of you guys love my videos and have been watching and subscribing. It's, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know what to say. So thank you. Thank you so much. And please stick around. But yeah, let's get into it. So this video is going to contain spoilers for season five of Piggy Blinders. So if you haven't seen that season yet, play this video in the background on mute so I get views and you can come back and watch it again later. I'm just kidding. Don't watch the video until you've seen Piggy Blinders. So I'm sure most of you guys know the importance of a good villain to a story. And as the famous film critic Robert Ebert put it, each film is only as good as its villain. Since the heroes and the gimmicks tend to repeat from film to film, only a good villain can transform a good try into a triumph. And this is no different in season five of Peaky Blinders. In season five of Peaky Blinders, we meet this man, Oswald Mosley. Arguably the most interesting and challenging villain Thomas Shelby has went up against. And as many have said, this time, Tommy has met his match. In the past, Thomas Shelby has always been the one in control of the situation. He's always the most calculating person in the room and he's always steps ahead of his opponents. However, in this scene, the power dynamic is completely flipped. It's as if Oswald Mosley has Thomas Shelby in the palm of his hand, which is why I want to do a breakdown of this scene as I found it fascinating how Oswald Mosley was able to take control of the power dynamic in the room. This scene starts with Tommy planning a meeting and knowing that Oswald Mosley isn't somebody to be taken lightly, Tommy decided to bring Arthur and Michael in order to establish power and control of the situation. So he tells Michael to smile and tell Arthur not to, and told Michael to sit down while telling Arthur to stand by the window. You sit, Arthur, you stand by the window. This is all strategic as Arthur's role in the setup is the muscle. He is there to intimidate. And by having him stand near a window, it shows that he is alert and he will be watching Mosley's every move and is ready to get his hands dirty the moment he is needed. Meanwhile, Michael's role in the setup is the brain. And I'm his business advisor. With him sitting down and smiling calmly, it suggests control as they are at ease, giving off the vibe that they have the upper hand in this situation and everything is going according to their calculations. By having this set up, both power and control, while also having the meeting in Tommy's office, not only does it give Tommy confidence, but it also gives Tommy an edge and make it more easily for him to apply psychological pressure on Mosley. So Tommy here is essentially using Arthur and Michael as chess pieces, much like how he used that boy from the good family in that scene with Alfie. Check it out if you haven't already. Unfortunately, in this case, instead of giving Tommy an edge, Arthur and Michael ended up being the downfall of Tommy in this scene. So as the Peaky Blinders get ready for the meeting, Tommy tells Arthur and Michael that the man they're about to meet is essentially the devil, which then leads into this beautiful shot of the door where the camera is held still for five seconds with a very subtle zoom creating anticipation and suspense as they wait for Mosley to enter the room. This is a technique often used in horror and thriller movies in order to create suspense and build up tension in the scene. And suddenly we get a perspective shift as the camera shifts to a point of view shot of Mosley entering the room, where we get to not only see, but also feel the intimidating setup of the Peaky Blinders. However, as the camera cuts back to a third person shot of Mosley, we notice that he's completely cool and doesn't seem to be bothered by the setup at all. This is where the power dynamic begins to shift. So Tommy cuts straight to the chase and asks him a direct question, but Mosley ignores the question and instead asks, May I take a cigarette? This is called a state breaking question. And interestingly, it's something that Tommy uses throughout the past seasons, where instead of answering questions straight, he asks a completely unrelated question. So the art fellows want you to know that any deviation from your instructions will have consequences. What's your dog's name? When under pressure, it is very easy to just go with the flow and follow the conversational pace set by the other party. By using a state-breaking question, it allows you to take the lead in the conversation and forces your opposition to go with your flow. So instead of just passively accepting, 
you actively steer the conversation to where you want it to go. So the moment Tommy started talking, Ozzy Mosley immediately breaks the flow and takes charge of the direction of the conversation. Watch how he takes a cigarette, leans back with ease, and after he lights a cigarette, he just throws the lighter onto the table. Like that's maximum disrespect right there. He takes his time and instead of answering Tommy's question with a direct statement, he indirectly answers it with another question. Who on earth is Jimmy McKevin? Allowing him to maintain the lead in the conversation rather than surrendering his control back over to Tommy. And once again, after Tommy asks for his strategy, he completely ignores the question and instead turns to Michael and Arthur. And similar to the scene in season two between Tommy and Alfie Solomons, where Tommy used Ollie to crack Alfie. Here, Mosley probably realizes that Tommy won't easily be cracked. So instead, by rattling Arthur and Michael, he can get to Tommy mentally. And this is what I meant earlier by Arthur and Michael end up being the downfall of Tommy in this scene. Another thing to notice here is how well prepared Mosley is coming into this meeting. He knows all the recent shortcomings of Michael and how he lost his money in America on the stock market, while also knows information about the situation between Arthur and Linda. As he provokes Arthur and Arthur gets more and more angry, Tommy is forced to calm him down, which once again put Tommy at a disadvantage. And Mosley does not stop there. The moment Tommy speaks Romanian to Arthur, he picks it up and comments on it. Bingo. 20 seconds in and I have them speaking their walk lingo. He then continues to say how he needs Tommy in particular and how he knows Tommy's enemies. You have many enemies. Shuffle the pack and pick another card. Which once again, he is reminding Tommy that he is the one in control. He is the one with the power. As the little cherry on top, he tells Tommy that he has done him a favor. Just, just think about that for a second. This man who basically steered the entire conversation, paid you zero respect, knows all your enemies, and now he decides to do you a favor. Now, if that's not called power and control, I don't know what is. Oswald Mosley is essentially saying, I have every ability to crush you if I want to, but instead, I want you to help me. I want you to be on my side. Anyways, that's my breakdown of this scene from season 5 of Peaky Blinders, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I found it interesting how through the use of state-breaking questions, confident body language, and careful research and preparation, Oswald Mosley was able to completely take control of the room. In fact, if you rewatch some scenes from earlier seasons, you notice that all of these techniques are techniques that Thomas Shelby have used himself. So I guess this time, he did really beat his match. So anyways, thank you so much for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really, really helped me out and grow the channel. And as always, go enjoy your movies.